Hello, this is Mrs. Kohler, and today we are going to talk about sex link genes. Now, a sex link gene doesn't have anything to do with actual sex. It has to do with the fact that it's on the sex chromosomes, which are the 23rd chromosomes. And if you'll remember, females have two X chromosomes and males have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. So sex link genes are found there. And they usually affect only males. And we're gonna talk about why that happens, but usually sex link traits only affect guys. So if you remember, the X chromosome is much bigger than the Y chromosome. So here's your X chromosome and here's your Y chromosome. See how it looks almost like a little Y. Okay. Now, since the Y chromosome is so much smaller, it doesn't have all this extra stuff down here, there are a lot of genes that are here on the X chromosome that don't have counterparts on the Y chromosome. So these could all be genes that are found on one chromosome but not the other. So since the Y chromosome is so tiny, it doesn't have very many genes. And generally when you think of a gene that's bad that would cause damage, it's usually going to be recessive. So in a female that has two X's, even if they get a copy of the mutant gene, they usually have a normal copy that can cover it up. If you are a female that has a gene for a disorder, but your second gene is normal, you're what's called a carrier. So in guys, they don't have a second copy of that gene to mask the trait because of the Y chromosome. There are missing spots where genes could be to cover up the defective alleles. So with things like colorblindness, you tend to get more males that are colorblind than females because a girl would have to inherit two copies, whereas a male only has to inherit one copy for it to affect them. So human examples, hemophilia. Hemophilia is a blood disorder where the blood doesn't clot properly. Colorblindness, normally guys are colorblind. And there's also a type of muscular dystrophy that is also sex linked that affects males much more often than females. So take this test real quick, <clears throat> see if you're colorblind. If you can see in the upper left hand corner, if you can see the number 58, that means you can distinguish all those colors. In the upper left, that's an 18. In the lower left, that's a letter E. And in the lower right, that's a 17. People that are colorblind, there's different degrees of colorblindness, so some people might be able to see one of these panels, but not some of the others. But they have trouble distinguishing between shades of green and shades of red if they're colorblind. So that's why all of these have different shades of green and red on them. So here's a sample sex linkage problem. So we have a normal woman who carries the colorblindness gene. Now, carries means she's a carrier, which means she's going to have one normal X and one X that has the colorblind gene. And she marries a normal man. Well, a normal man is just going to be X, Y. So we want to know what the possible phenotypes of their children would be. Now to do this, we're going to make a Punnett square. So here's your Punnett square. We're going to put mom at the top. So here's her normal X and her XC. And we'll put dad down the side. Here's his X and here's his Y. So now the first possibility is normal X, normal X. There's normal X with an XC. We have normal X y and we would have x c 
y. And that will be okay. Beginning again. So the normal female, that was the xx. The carrier female, that was the xxc. The normal male, that was the xy. And the colorblind male, xc. Why? Now, there's something that you're going to want to keep in mind with these, and that's if they ask you something about what percentage of their male children will be colorblind or what percentage of the boys will be colorblind, well, the boy possibilities are only two. So the chances of a boy being colorblind is going to be 50% because when you're talking about boys, you're not counting these daughters. So there's two girls and there's two boys. So you need to read the question carefully and see if it's asking what percentage of their children or what percentage of their girls or what percentage of their boys. So half of their daughters would be normal. Half of their daughters would be carriers. Half of their sons would be normal and half of their sons would be colorblind. Now, at Sex linkage, also called X linkage because it's found on the X chromosome, is also real common in cats. And in female cats, it can produce coat colors that are you know, splotchy looking. So the gene for coat color is located on the X chromosome. So females have two genes for it. So they'll be one color in some parts of their body, one color in another part of their body. That's how you get calico or tortoise shell cats. So this is my cat, Gracie, and if you look at her, you can see that she's got dark areas and she's got light areas. She's not tabby striped, but she has blotches of dark and blotches of light. She's what's called tortoise shell. So one of her genes for coat color is brown and one of her genes for coat color is gray. So she's brown and gray blotched. Now, if you look at our other cat, Hitomi, she's solid black. She has a gene for, she has two genes for black. So she's XB, XB. So it doesn't matter which gene is activated for her. Either way, she's going to be solid black. Now, this can't happen in males for a very good reason, and that's because the males only have one X chromosome. So they only get one gene for coat color, so whatever gene they get, that's what they are. So you can't get a male that's calico or tortoise shell. It doesn't happen. If it would happen, they'd have an extra chromosome and then there's a host of other problems. You don't usually see calico or tortoise shell male cats. 